but just how exactly does oxidation get carried around in the blood? What does it actually look like? Well, how about an LDL particle? Hang on a second, I hear you saying. Didn't you just tell us that LDL wasn't dangerous? Well, yes, I did. And on average, that's true. People with high LDL levels do tend to live longer. But LDL particles can become oxidised when they react with other oxidised substances. So you see, normally in the blood, there's a single population of LDL in a normal distribution, which you can see shown here in yellow. This LDL won't harm you. The size and density of LDL, however, changes when it becomes damaged, of which oxidation is a major cause. In this sample, you can see four distinct populations of LDL, exactly three more than normal, representing the presence of oxidised and therefore damaging LDL particles. This LDL is often referred to as small dents, given they become microscopically smaller. And while most people have heart attacks, have normal total levels of LDL, there being no difference in LDL levels with or without a heart attack, when we look at damaged or oxidised LDL, it's a different story. Look at the level of damaged LDL in the group on the left who don't have heart disease. Compare it to the oxidised LDL level in the two groups on the right who do have heart disease. An oxidised LDL, or of course any other blood oxidation product, is also able to damage this furry layer that lines blood vessels, called the glycocalyx. This is perhaps the most important level of protection against atherosclerosis that most doctors have never heard about. Amongst other things, it shields the artery walls from coagulation particles, secretes something called antithrombin-3 that inhibits clots from forming, and stimulates the production of nitric oxide, itself another potent inhibitor of blood coagulation. The fact that oxidised LDL damages the glycocalyx means it significantly increases the risk of clotting and therefore atherosclerosis. Oxidation stress too appears to be the cause of calcification within arteries. Oxidation has been shown to lead to DNA damage which leads to the expression of a chemical moiety called poly-ADP ribose. And this then lays down calcium within the lining of the arteries. <coughs> that coronary artery calcification is associated with unstable plaques and heart attack is therefore probably not a coincidence. Interestingly, statins are also known to damage DNA, a fact which was apparent to the Japanese scientists who stopped researching the mycotoxin that eventually became the first statin because of the increased rate of cancer in test dogs. Which makes it unsurprising that statins also significantly increase coronary artery calcification. <coughs> 